Hi, I'm Brandon Gray, and I love Hallmark Mahogany Movies. Hi, I'm Brian Harold, and I like Hallmark Mahogany Movies. Hi, I'm Daniel Say it, Thompson. <laughs> Say it, Dad. You won't. Say it. Say it. And Say it. Unthinkably, I despise <laughs> Hallmark Mahogany Movies. Oh I'm sorry. And this Dan, is the, the Hallmark, Dan, Hallmark, Hallmark Podcast. podcast. Deck the Hallmark, it's his podcast. Brandon and friends host this podcast. We hope you like this jolly podcast. Wow. Trace and Rig record that every ep- every week. <laughs> every week they do every that. episode. Every episode they, they do in the a back whole and room. they do a little re-recording. It sounds perfect every time. In case you missed uh, yesterday we got a new theme song. Yeah. In case you, you know, did couldn't, couldn't no tell way you the could difference. Have missed it. <laughs> uh but shout out to uh, I sing. Dan, you do a little of something there. A little singing. It's kind your, of singing. your award is coming, I believe. You're going to be an EGOT that, just off that, that one that bar. That's way out of any range that I have. My range is no, so small. No, you did great. And you have that upper register. No, you, you did decide great. to go high, and I, what am I supposed to do over here? <laughs> like, you know, do the best I can with what I am. I liked it, though. Thank you. The EGOT's coming. The EGOT's coming. All time. for that one I don't bar. know what. That's a Grammy I'm getting. You're getting all of the awards I'm going to get all You're of You're going to get a Emmy, a Grammy, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, a Tony. You don't know the uh, other. An Oscar. Oscar. That's the big yeah. boy. Yeah. You're going to get all of them for that one bar. That's Because we did film it. That was a bar. Yeah. That's a bar. Uh, right there. Oh, guys, oh. I uh, do have a pumpkin spice oh. in my hand. Oh, my God. Good, fall good. has sprung, as <laughs> yes, they yeah. say. Fall is um, falling. I, I would love to give you a hard time, Brand, but we did uh, embark on a journey yesterday. Brian and I did. You did, too. Um, and that yes, journey was the pumpkin spice goldfish. Yeah. Mm. Um, and it's presented by Duncan, apparently, because <laughs> yeah. uh, why not? sponsor. Uh, I don't know why they have to be goldfish aside from they're called goldfish, but whatever that combination of Graham and pumpkin spice was, put it right in my veins. Mm-hmm. Because here's, here's what's we deceiving. We started with one bag and it became a two bag a day habit quick like. Have we figured out <laughs> a quick supplier like. yet? Do we have a supplier? <laughs> I don't know. You can keep up. So but. here's the thing. They are very, very good. I think the Duncan logo on there threw me for a loop yeah. Yeah. because if you've ever had a Duncan pumpkin spice, very sweet. it's like a kick straight to your your <laughs> neck. It's like going down, you're like, I got pop grain in my throat. So like, and it's not that. It's very yeah, like a, a very good subtle. combination. So uh, unlike Dunkin' Donuts, uh, PSL, it is a very subtle. Well, what uh, you said was, I think it needs more pumpkin spice. And yeah. what I think you meant was it needs to be sweeter. I expected it to be sweet. Yeah. It's not sweet, but the it's pumpkin not. spice Graham combo is just everything I want. I, 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 I think I me, me giving that um, notes made it seem like I did not love them and so you guys <laughs> so finished off my bag, off. Just, which was not the case. I did not them. sign off yeah. on you finishing as my as bag. You said it didn't have enough pumpkin spice. Bri tried one. He was like, oh, yeah, no, these are. Oh, so yeah. Brad said he hated them and never yeah, wants to have another right. bite, right? So we'll we'll all in. Fill them up. Just get a oh. funnel out. It's uh, the, the worst. Yes, the Duncan PSL is the worst. That is, oh, that is correct, terrible. Lynn. Uh, that's why I uh, uh, trotted out. I've waited. You think Seven Brew is going to have a pumpkin spice? <laughs> and should we do another video to make sure we got to get Panda? Call. Call Panda right now. Right. Text Panda and ask, do you know if Seven Brew has a pumpkin spice? I got, I want it. Yeah, I want thank you. Do you know I've never had a pumpkin spice drink? Do you want to try this? I'll pop no, the no, lid off. This was me in 2018. No, no, no. I'll pop the lid off. You sure? Yeah. All right. So this is Starbucks. It's just pumpkin spice it's straight off the it's, it's with oak milk. Oh, yeah. What was that? <laughs> it's with <laughs> oak milk. Are you going to... Do, do you gonna? get really sentimental about your oak milk? <laughs> you sometimes you... It brings you to tears. I... This smells great. Dude. Give it a go. With the oak milk. With the, it's oat milk. Uh, that was oat my fault. Milk? I claim that this came from an oak tree. Oh, that's really good. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Just keep that lid off for me. Well, wow. last time I uh, let you try you anything some, pumpkin. Uh, goldfish you, in there? You yeah. Oh, fill that up. Oh, be good. Do we have any goldfish in the yeah. in the room? Yeah. Bri, go get tank? it. Let's do a dip real quick. Whoa. Let's do a dip Whoa. real quick. Do a dip. Let's do a dip real I quick. I do like that idea. Pumpkin spice goldfish. When yeah, I dip, dip, you dip, we dip. dip. Um, all right, here it is. Add that to the track this, list. I'm really sorry, Hillary, this and all is, the people listening. <laughs> that freak to nasty the dip is now in the, is okay. in the playlist. So I'm going to try to keep that off of there. That's right. here's, here's one. We'll get to the movie at some point. Here's Speaking one. Speaking of unthinkably good things. Yeah. 
This is going to be great. Yeah, here go, we go for it. Okay, so I'm taking my Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin spice goldfish, yep. dunking it into Don't. my Starbucks pumpkin spice with oat milk, mm. <laughs> and let's see. Yeah, that hitch, dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was looking yeah, for. Dude. It looks, it looks like it hits. Man, oh my god! Crush them up in there. Get you a little. Yeah, just, yeah, just mm. dude. They float top. at the top. Yeah. It's like it's like um, it's like a fancy. It's like, it's like croutons. It's like, in a, <laughs> like in a soup. It's like they crout- float at the top <laughs> like croutons. <laughs> what are you using croutons for? That I need to be made aware of. You know, how croutons float at the in top your of salad. Salad soup. <laughs> so you know how they float. On? It's like croutons. Mm. It's like um. Mm. When you when we go to lose Dan and we uh, munch up all of the things the and wontons, we put it in the, the wonton. Yeah. yeah, it's like that. Yeah. Just like that. Like uh, that. well, <clears throat> I think we did everything we, we did. were supposed to do <laughs> in this yeah. regard. It's a good uh, thing we didn't save that for the fall fish. preview. Yeah. yeah, that would have been a mistake oh, yeah. to save that for the fall preview on Friday. But uh, we'll wait until you find out <laughs> what oh we do Friday. Oh they, uh, yeah, a panel what are we has finding asked out? The people at Southern uh, at Southern at Seven Brew about it. He has asked. They get they start selling on September third. They can't. They get the pumpkin flavoring in on September first. I don't know what that means. I, I, don't, I don't know what that So they're going to start. This is your classic uh, Labor Day tradition. You can yes, go out there to Seven Labor Brew. Day weekend yeah. to Seven Brew here in Greenville, which I think they're elsewhere. Did the people at Bramble Fest, did anybody trek out to Seven Brew? Tre- did anybody trek on out there? You guys can uh, let, let us know in the Bramble Jam Plus comment section uh, live chat. Uh, Unspeakably Good Things originally aired on August 28th, 2022. Again, this is a friend group movie, so just like forgive me for not hitting every detail of every storyline that's going on. You can't email I don't care, Brian at DegdaHallmark.com, but you should email Dan at DegdaHallmark.com because I'm sure that everybody was very offended by that. By opening. the despised, the, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, thanks right. for setting me up there so nice. Uh, I, I didn't say you, you made your bed mm-hmm. this morning, and you said. <laughs> and every morning. And every morning. <laughs> I don't I'm, make my bed. Really? What? I don't. I'm I'm serious. Tell us about that. I before my wife and I got married, I'm serious. We were talking about different things because we didn't we didn't live together first, and I was like, the one thing that I'll never do, unless we have like for some reason we're showing the house like to sell the house or something, is make the bed. Hmm. I think it's a useless task, and it's menial and it doesn't make any sense, hmm. and I'm not going to do it. Hmm. And. My wife was cool with that, and she was a big, like, make your bed at the beginning of every day yeah. person because her and I are very different. And she, I have won her over over the course of the 16 years wow. this Friday. We, the bed is not made in our house. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. Haven't you heard that thing, though? Like, if you start your you day. Start your you start your day. Your you make, you put on your start pants. Right. Yeah, that's just, that's just something that people say to try to make themselves feel better about accomplishing a menial task. But they That's start on is. a good you note. You do all kinds of things in the morning. You make coffee in the morning. Nobody's like, you know, once you make coffee, you've done something. They do it to, to it's the bed, it's big bed. It's it <laughs> don't start. It's big bed. No, I, it's big bed is what it is. I don't make my bed. I just want to be on the record that I do agree on with Dan on this one. Yeah, uh, we, we I, also, I will also we think that. That's what I'm talking <laughs> about. We yeah, also yeah. do not make Just up. try it, gang, for like a few a month. Don't make your bed. I, but I you w- get so used to it it'll feel great i will say this and i do think this is big bad and just you know 30 years on this planet but on the occasion that like we've really cleaned the house i will finish up that by making the bed mm. yeah. to tie up the ensemble sure. if everything else looks right Put if everything on. looks yeah, yeah, yeah. if super clean which you know i'll buy that right i'll buy that sure. right yeah, but I'll when you have kids that's never the case <laughs> but like on that one day a year where you're like let's clean the house yeah. You know, we we finish that up by making the bet, so that feels really good. Yeah, I, and then I the kids think, destroy it. So you know, yeah, it's all worth it. It is what it is. Unspeakably good things. Originally, oh, unspeakably good things. They do speak the good things, Brian. It's unthinkably. It's unthinkably good God, things. <laughs> so they they can't. You don't want to talk about good things. <laughs> you, you're going to go out on that ledge, it's huh? Big good things. Yeah, can't even give this movie a chance. You don't even want to speak about the good things. You thought Dan was messed up. You're a handful. Don't want to speak about good things. How do you live with Rick, yourself? You mean to tell me you like this movie? I love this movie. It reminded me of the Sisterhood of the Traveling My Pants. <laughs> about uh, that's all you. I needed. Unthinkably. Well <laughs> but if you can't think it, then how can you speak it? There's a, that's a, there is a conundrum there. Um, unspeakably and unthinkably good things originally aired on August 28th, 2022, and it went a little something like this. The movie kicks off in the year 2005 with a group of friends 
uh, talking about their lives and getting ready to change things as they spread out and live their lives and start it and all that good stuff. They're laughing. They're singing. They're friends just like us. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Same thing. Flash forward to present day. It's in Italy. We uh, pick back up with Allison. She's doing, uh, I believe, like an Instagram live, maybe a, a TikTok, maybe one of those things. But she's in Italy. She's walking around next to a hunk of a man. I got to be honest, never caught his name because I was so struck by how hunky this man Paolo, was. Paolo in the veil. Uh, Paolo, <laughs> Paolo, Paolo in the veil. Uh, talking about how he, he, she can't wait for her girlfriends to get over there for girl week. It's going to be a lot of fun. They're all going to come over uh, to Italy. And it's going to be a, a great big fun. Then we meet up with Risa, who is also with a hunk of a man. Uh, lots of hunky men in this movie. Uh, she gets a call from Melina saying that she can't go to Italy uh, anymore. The stuff has hit the fan. We see her. She owns a restaurant. She's panicking about losing her restaurant. It took a big hit when she was going through chemo, but she beat the uh, beat cancer, and the restaurant business hasn't picked up since she's been back. But a food critic is supposed to come at some point this month with no notice. Except and it could for change. the fact that it's this month. <laughs> yeah. And, it's and it could change everything. So she's like, I can't leave. And Risa is like, I've got an idea. Call them. Tell them the wait. She's like, now we're thinking. Now we got it. Uh, so she does that. They go to Italy. So I guess it's all good. Uh, they start catching up. And Allison ends up getting a job offer that would keep her in Italy. Uh, she introduces her friends to uh, Nico. That's his name. I did write it down. Uh, when she clearly uh, uh, likes, but she's still having a hard time committing to Italy. And then uh, uh, consequently, because of that, also Nico. Uh, Melina goes to a cooking class and learns how to uh, make some Italian food. She meets a hunk named Lucas, and he just is going to keep on asking her to dinner until she finally says yes. Allison seems unsure about the job offer situation, and it keeps getting more complicated because she gets another job offer stateside to teach at an HBCU. Risa is considering taking a break from her husband and extending her trip to Italy because of some things that are going on at home. Melina ends up going on a date with Lucas, and apparently they have a good old time because they keep going out again, and they, go, they make some food together and he tries to kiss her and she's like I haven't been with anybody since I've gotten sick and I would hate to get involved with someone and then the cancer comes back and then I'm a burden and he opens up about how his mom went through the same thing and uh, one of the things that inspired him was how his dad stuck around blah 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 and they end up kissing that's the most important part here is they do end up kissing we have a kiss everybody Hello. Risa ends up having a conversation with her husband about how she's feeling uh, she's looking for an apartment She's worried that if she never gets pregnant, that her husband won't want her anymore. He assures her that he will. And she's just like, I just wish that you were here with me. Allison hops on a video call with the college state side and completely bombs the interview, says she didn't feel great about it afterwards. Melina pulls out a book and she's put that she put together consi consisting of posts that Allison has made. She says that it's a book of poetry. She should publish it, even left some more blank pages for you to finish this sucker up. Uh, Risa's husband does end up showing up as a big surprise. She jumped into his arms and we're all happy for that. Allison tells the board at the Italian school that she is staying forever and ever and ever, does want the job, and the movie ends together with the group of friends toasting and eating pasta, and that, my friends, was Unthinkably, Unthinkably Good things. things. We did it. We sure did. Let's take a quick break. We'll be right back to break this movie down and so much more here on... Are you all right, buddy? Take the Hallmark. We're back. Hello, everybody. We are talking about unthinkably 
Good things. We, we are going to speak on it. We, we will speak, speak yes. on it. Um, the first in the mahogany series of movies that Hallmark is doing, which is uh, was birthed out of their mahogany card series. Um, and I think we already have another mahogany movie coming up in just a couple of weeks, some movies and mysteries, which we'll also be covering. Um, but let's talk about this first one, Unthinkably Good Things. Brian, speak on it. Give your hot take. Let's see how hot you can get here, pal. Okay. Unspeakably turned off, speaking on. Got it. This movie had an exceptional amount of denim in it. I have to get this out of the way early. So it has nothing to do with anything else. Did There's, you do a denim count? I should have before Ooh. I noticed. Like I would have had to go back. and Trace did know. a denim count. Trace, what was the denim? Like in my closet? No, the denim All count. of it. <laughs> All of it denim. I don't believe All are, denim. Yeah. yeah. You okay. even have denim hot pants you keep talking about, which is weird. <laughs> I'm talking about my hot pants. I don't, I don't think it's workplace appropriate, but you always bring up your denim Joke's hot on pants. you. I'm HR. <laughs> yeah, it that's good terrifying. Joke. Harry Reinhold. <laughs> that's my name. Changed it. Changed it back. Trace out. Oh, that was good. So that, yeah, a lot of <laughs> denim. Um, Harry I'll move Reinhold. on so we don't have to hear about yeah. Harry Reinhold. A lot, of, a lot of denim. A lot, yeah. a lot of denim. Is, I was surprised with the amount of denim. Yeah. No, yeah. That's a hot take. So I appreciated the heck out of what they were doing here with what they're going for. And they had some really real, relatable, troubling situa- like problem situations that people deal with in real life. And so I really appreciated that and the different levels, uh, the variance of the types of problems they were putting on the screen. It was refreshing to have a girlfriend group and their friendship be front and center and not the relationships. Uh, that was, that was kind of refreshing. I like that. They were lived in relationships. That was something it felt, it felt like lived in. Like they, they were kind of honest with each other. They didn't tiptoe around uh, concerns or problems they had, things they wanted to say, they would say to each other and they weren't worried about offending each other. So I appreciated that. But I felt like they were trying to replicate too many problem situations. And I was, I got very confused <laughs> trying to follow the situations and <laughs> Um, there was just almost too much that they were throwing at you. And so I, I liked what, I love what they were doing. I really liked the idea of what they were doing. Their effort, great job. But I was just too confused by the situations. And so it kind of threw me back a little bit. And so it was okay for me. It was just okay. Threw you back. Threw me back a little yeah. bit in my seat. I was like up yeah. here, and then I was back here. You are back there. I got and, it. And um, <laughs> so um, Italy looked great, though. And I was impressed by the amount of denim. There you go. Well, I didn't. I, I can't, can't believe we got a denim take. I didn't yeah. see it. I didn't, I didn't see that see coming. It happening. Yeah. Uh, I agree with uh, Brian for the most part. I did not take note of the denim, so I cannot <laughs> comment on that. Uh, but the movie was just okay to me uh, as a whole. But I will say some things that I really appreciated about this movie. Uh, one, one thing that I've never like I've noticed, but I've never noticed until this movie is how all Hallmark movies um, that aren't mahogany um, use the same instrumental music in the background yeah. because this movie clearly mm-hmm. used different music and it was grooving and I loved it. It uh, did make this movie feel different. It did make this movie mm-hmm. feel like it was a, a special event. Um, I do like that Hallmark put this on all three networks. And if you don't like it, go shove off. And, um, rocks. and I also really Damn. do appreciate one. You mentioned the lived in uh, relationships, which led to serious conversations. I love that Hallmark actually had a conversation about the black experience. Um, and that conversation was really uh, beautiful and well done. And a conversation that I don't know, uh, two years ago, three years ago, we would have never dreamed of having on the Hallmark Channel. So I uh, absolutely love that. I applaud what Hallmark was doing here with this movie. I will say, like, when they were all together as a friend group, I was like, man, I can't wait to get more of the relationships. And then when they were with the relationships, I was like, I can't wait for the friend group to get back together. So I don't know what that says about me. I was just like, oh, yeah, I really liked when they were together, I guess. So um, that's probably more of a me thing than anything else. But overall, the movie I, I did enjoy. Um, but but uh, those are the, the points that I have, and I have set them. Dan? Nicely done. Thank Great you. Um, I don't despise mahogany movies. I do need to be very clear about that. That's just an intro I have to do. It's required. If he, whatever he starts with, with love, I have to say it. It's a dangerous position to be in. Um, this movie's historic, guys. Like, it is a landmark event for Hallmark um, to have a movie that we've 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 done a great job evolving on this network from barely seeing a person of color of note to having them in lead roles to having interracial relationships and now we have a movie that is specifically inculcated in 
a culture that is not the cultural norm of Hallmark movies. You get to talk about the black experience. You get people of color living in situations and doing things that are pertinent to them. There's a, a woman who has to who who is tied to a historically black college and university in HBCU, the largest one in the in the country, North Carolina A and T. And you get all of these on screen. Um, that's awesome. You have difficult conversations that are being talked about by adults. This friend group is close enough to walk through issues of marital strife, of infertility, infertility, of career not going the way you should, or or your life not going the way you should. All of those things, walking through them together, but also understanding that friend groups sometimes keep things from each other because th- these friends sometimes tell each other everything. Sometimes they tell one something they don't tell the other, and, and it's a great great dynamic to see these three at work the three relationships with the men all work really really well it, the movie sometimes is so overstuffed that it's boring weirdly enough like it because it's so overstuffed and brian i, I agree with you 100 there's too much going on here and they throw cancer into the mix yeah they literally said what are all the biggest yeah, yeah. things that we yes could, uh, possibly and, have going and, on and so it doesn't feel like they they climb up the hill that they've set for themselves from a plot standpoint but you know kudos to um you know, cultural inclusion at a molecular level that feels authentic, earned, and, and with a lot of integrity and organic. Uh, kudos to real adults having real conversations and not a movie that just follows the same nine-act arc that Hallmark movies uh, go to. I'm excited to see more from Mahogany. Uh, it, it did feel like a longer movie than, than I needed, and it did feel like boring at parts, but the historic nature of this film we should very much take note of and applaud, and I'm excited to see more from them. So there you have it. Boy, I feel a little silly for my denim take now. Well, uh, but no, I mean, the, to be fair, lots of denim. I, I, I never it even... It can be historic for multiple reasons. But I never even you. thought of watching the movie. I just feel like I need to go back and watch it again to check out all the denim. Is it more than normal? Yeah. At what point in this movie yeah. were you like, man... Early. Well, early. Early. Like, as soon as they got to Italy, early. <laughs> wow. Yeah. You're like, man, the denim's popping. It's, uh, but what do they wear in other movies? They're not wearing not denim? as much denim. Like, I'm talking jean jackets on dungaree pants. You know, like... <laughs> no one shirts. was wearing dungarees. Well, there were definite dunga- <laughs> wranglers, dungarees. Definite dungarees thing. I did see live, and they were <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I mean, like, I just couldn't get over them. I saw them in Australia. If you can wow. I know. I know, no, no. It was you wild. You need dungarees in Australia. Yeah, they brought a live kangaroo on the stage. <laughs> oh, it was never crazy. Never well. Yeah, it never, uh, it never ends well. You're it never right. ends well, and they keep doing they it. Keep doing it. Uh, I well, can't believe it. Well, he, he is trained. He's trained. Yeah, I don't know. He's trained. It was, in live shows. it was the boxer. <laughs> they brought somebody that ran a person on stage in their biggest hit. You know that. What's the title of that one? Um, Frankie says tomorrow. Frankie says tomorrow. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and they just the kangaroo just kicks him. Yeah, clear across the Frankie stage. Frankie says tomorrow's yeah. always here. Yeah. Yeah. Frankie says tomorrow, tomorrow's never all fear. Day. Here, hopping in, hopping out. Here we go. Here's a clown. <laughs> oh, song does take a turn. It, it does. does. It's yeah. time for the feels. Yeah, when you think a clown's it's, time, gonna... it's time for the feels. Okay. Uh, Brian? Yeah. I had inside joke feels. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. guys, what is up here? In a journey ahead. <laughs> what is up? What is up? Here. What's up with that? <laughs> we, don't, we don't know what is segment. up. What's up elsewhere? No, right we, here. You know, what's talking, up right here? Right in front of us. That's right. In a journey ahead, there was a don't make me sing mm, reference. There was. In this movie, there was a prominent Sugar Ray reference. Yes. Now. What is going on? That's right. Here. Um, it's almost like Rig is starting to pepper these scripts. Yes. But I, we had a conversation about this. So the movie starts in 2005, 2005. where she steals the dog. In 2005, mm-hmm. what, who was a prevalent band? Sugar Ray. Sugar but Ray. Also, but there was also, a boxer, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, yep. that was nearing like the end of his career by around, around 2000. So if that dog's like seven or eight years old, and, and uh, it was her husband's dog, yeah. yep. she could have easily been Sugar Ray Robin, but or yep. Sugar Ray Leonard, yep. but. I mean, we're going to say... I like Sugar yeah. Ray. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Sugar Ray, it's for sure. Be, yeah. and so it, I, watching that, I just knew everybody in the DTH community 
was yes. rallying around that. that rallying was around saying. the Sugar Ray. Yeah. As we do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, the, the only other thing... We're all going out to the Sugar Ray rally. Yeah. Uh, it, that's in D.C. Uh, on the t- yeah. October 1st. Yeah. Sugar Ray Day. Yeah, Sugar Ray Day. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, it's a full we, all day. Walk, we all walk, walk down Pennsylvania Avenue and we sing Fly and stuff. That's it's great. Cool. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's really no... We're not trying to accomplish anything. Anything. No, no, no. It's just no. a matter of having a day in our celebrate. nation's capital exactly to right. celebrate... Yeah, Sugar Ray. You don't Sugar want to forget. Ray. That's right. Sugar Never Ray. <laughs> uh, the I really like that scene when they were hiking and all the secrets came out and mm. they kind of aired all the laundry. And then my favorite part was that the voiceover at the end and just that whole thing about friendship and sisterhood and uh, it made me really appreciate the sisterhood that we have yes. here. Um, <laughs> I am going to <laughs> I am going to bring up something that. Stan audibly uh, groaned at each time it happened, and I audibly cheered when they sang together and they mm. had the dance routine it going. Brutal. It was brutal. I loved it because twice. because here's the thing. My, me and my close friends here in this room, we sing together all the time, all the time. And so that's, that's how you know that you're yeah. close friends. Yeah. It solidified for me that they are best friends because they get that song that they sing. They got the dance. We we sing literally all the time. Ryan's man. Been in the office for a month. He's probably like, I can't believe how much they sing. They sing a lot. We Every sing, fifteen minutes, Brand gets a song stuck in my head. Yeah, we sing. Non-stop. We sing nonstop. And I will say, my feels are the same, Brand. I hated it in the movie because it was it was so authentically cringeworthy. Yeah, they didn't bother to make it. It's like Victor Webster sings in Five Star Christmas, right. and it's bad singing, and yeah, that's right. what makes it great. But they went back to the well two or three times. And I just, it was a tough watch, but it did feel very much like them. Like, yeah. I don't always hit all the notes, Brand. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you've heard the intro. Occasionally, I miss a note. Brand! Occasionally, <laughs> yeah. Occasionally, I miss a note. Uh, but we still sing we because still sing. we love to sing. And so, yes, that was nice. And we are working on a dance routine, too, to kind of yeah. go along with something. I don't want to, you know. We don't want to bust that out too soon. Not too but soon, but it's happening. That's exactly right. Uh, let's take one more quick break. We'll come back with the Weight Watch. And the Weather Homework here on WLFO, The Giant. As soon as you said WLFO, I, I, I just giant. thought it was a radio station that only played LFO songs. No, not this time. It's, that's, <laughs> they just so, play like Summertime Girls and uh, what is that? Sometimes it's hot, sometimes it's cold, yeah. sometimes oh. my head wants to... Here's what you guys might not know is we are syndicated now on the radio across yeah. the nation. So to kind, of, to kind of get those <laughs> yeah. out of the way, I say them. Yes. You'll hear me say them every once in a while. So WLFO, like The Giants. sent us... Uh, all those radio sounds yes. that we just have to play sometimes. WLFO, yeah. the giant based out of San Francisco. Shout out to those guys. Shout out uh, to WLFO. It's time right. for the wait what part of the show. Brian, anything in this movie make you go wait what? A couple. So I don't have a smartwatch. Can you take phone calls from a smartwatch? Yes. You can? Okay. Yeah. That was a real question. Yeah. I just didn't want to know. <laughs> I've never worn a smartwatch. I've never seen anybody answer it like this. Who's older? Inspector you Gadget. or Panda? I don't. <laughs> Man. He looks younger, but... He looks young. I've avoided these newfangled devices. He's like, uh, he's like opposite Panda. Because he, look, he looks young, but he's actually uh, <laughs> getting Benjamin close Button to 100. Situation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, all right. Say it with me. Risa so was, was retired, retired from, from the, the military? military? <laughs> that I did not get. The math for me. I hope I'm wrong. Like, and I'm not doing the math yeah, right. Maybe I, she's she just looks great for fifty. She said I'm almost forty at one point. Oh, did she? She did. She and can't so, be retired from the military. She can't be. And I text my <laughs> aunt who just re- retired from the military. How many years before you retire? My cousin's husband. How many years? I t- double check my facts. Twenty years minimum before you can retire. She went to. They all went to college together, right. right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. doesn't check out. She's a forty-year-old military yeah. retiree. Retiree. It doesn't add up. No, it's just and there's no Not way around all. that. Sarah says you can take phone calls from your smartwatch. That's kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Wow. Oh, oh. There was that whole nine one one thing, right? With the I, the Apple Watch, they were pushing. What? You can call nine one one from your watch if you're drowning and you, you flip your car off a bridge and you're underwater. You think the police <laughs> are getting there in time? You think that's according the, to the commercial? You're halfway from bridge to ocean, yeah. and you're like, and you're like, here it is. There's gonna, they're gonna quick. be an aquatic ambulance, yes, which I did one. also see live. Are, are they're gonna, <laughs> they're gonna get in there in time to save me if I just pop it? That's real quick what on the Apple phone. is guaranteeing, according to what I does it work observed. underwater? I think that's yeah, the thing, man. I think it does. Great. 
It's amazing. Okay, so that was... You call 911 and it's just... <laughs> yeah. We got another one! Yeah. Someone's know. underwater! Blub, 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 blub. Go get him! Right, we'll, we'll edit that in post. Never mind. Um, yeah. Any more? Uh, the Dr. Allison Cooper, I was just the whole thing with her uh, just becoming a like a freshman English teacher, doctor, you know, switching that whole career. That I was just really questioning the level like of the classes she was teaching. It, um, it was a bold move. Mm. Um, and I, they tried to work their way out of it with this thing where she's got an interview with the board mm -hmm. and she doesn't feel great. But it was a bold move in this movie for this woman to choose Italy over department chair at the largest historically black college in, uh, or university in the United States. I can't believe they did it. Mm -hmm. Now, they did it as this what the heart wants thing and she realizes it's not for her and the interview isn't going well. <clears throat> but when I realized they were going to do it, I was like, man, that's bold. Mm -hmm. That's a very bold move for this movie, the first mahogany movie to do, but they did it. Yes. So God bless them. Yeah. So that was that was kind of it. I'll leave the rest for you guys. Thanks. I, I just have a couple. One, tapas? Um, <laughs> you can't name. This is, goes back they to my the point. the restaurant tapas. This goes back to my point yesterday where they were eating at a restaurant that's just called Eat. Mm -hmm. Guys, you can't. We can't just keep calling restaurants like things that they are. Like tapas, that's a type of food that you That's serve a it's a plate. small plate yeah, yeah. i mean you should come to my restaurant it's called side dish <laughs> it's just side dishes like you can't get a plate you can't get a burger but you can get any side dish you guys want to go to appetizers later appetizers <laughs> later dude oh appetizers is great yeah dude like eight they, different types of cheese sticks. What's they, they only serve appetizers i don't know i guess you can do it it does cut to the point but that might be part of the reason why they're like like I think part of the reason why people go to tapas restaurants or they get like tricked into it and then they realize it's yeah, good. Yeah. Like, and no, so there are people that actually like tapas. I know there are, I know there are, but yeah. like to get me to a tapas restaurant, I do have to be tricked into it. That's right. So like, no, yeah, I see small plates. I'm upset. I'm about to spend $80 right. to be hungry. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, when I go to a place that's called tapas, I do know what I'm getting into and I'm mad about it. So that might be part of the problem. That might be yes. part of the problem. Now I have had, there's a great, Tapas place in Asheville, North Carolina, and we don't have to do this on the air. But keep like, Asheville weird. Can we do yeah. that, please? For it's the love of like God, one of the best restaurants on the East Coast, and like I just, it's fantastic. That's my one exception to that rule. Mm. Is that was what's it called? Trip. It's called Kurate. Okay. C U. See, I went there and I was expecting to be taught karate, but it didn't well, quite work out. Well, it's spelled curate, C U R A T E, but it's it's pronounced curate. Oh, that is weird, and it <laughs> is keeping it weird. Yeah, it is keeping it weird, but it's it's phenomenal. Fun, phenomenal if you're yeah. ever in Asheville. It's tapas. It's free, it's free pub there for Curate. Phenomenal. It's also my wife's favorite restaurant on the planet. There you so, go. You know, there you and go. it's tapas. Who does not it's make tapas. beds. That's right. Anymore. Make, anymore. 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 But she would. She would. But she now can. she's she's now she's on my side. Great. Um, I also just don't know if you can like just call a magazine that's sending a, uh, 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 food critic and just go, so now's not a good time for me. <laughs> <laughs> it would be better for me if like maybe next month. Cause I think at that point they just go, okay. And then they don't go, <laughs> right. yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. go. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like I, critics don't like being told when they can come or not. That's kind of the point of the, the the whole system there uh that's all i got dan um we've uh the the woman that's in italy teaching she is staying in this monstrous italian villa that like is from the set of under the tuscan sun and it overlooks these trees it's massive it's big it's everything you'd think it would be and we find out that the college has just put her up here mm -hmm. a, just a single woman here in this massive villa and she says can you believe that this is a university rental mm -hmm. no i cannot <laughs> no. <laughs> no no i cannot nor should you there are some strings attached you're gonna have to kill a man later there is no world where they're like yes you're just here for six months stay in a mansion stay in a probably a ten thousand dollar a night uh, italian villa uh please and have your friends over we'll t we'll pick up the tab on that um i do want to be clear this restaurant uh uh, magazine is such a big deal that she says that every restaurant featured in the magazine has doubled their profits. Every one. Wow. So if you are featured in this magazine, mm -hmm. you, you're, you've doubled. There's no exception to that rule. 
I don't know how that's possible, but every restaurant, it's like a cheat code at that you know, point. Restaurants love talking about their profits with other restaurants. They do. Too. There's <laughs> big, big on that, real big on that, for sure. Um, and then I do love that the critic is coming unannounced this month. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's those two things. You can't say both of those things back to back. The critic is coming sometime within the next month. They they have told us that. That is not unannounced. Um, that's not how that works. I just want to speak really quickly. Dan, are you done? No, I'm not, but go for well, it. Well, just to Beth Ann, who has said there are lots of uh, places that are pizza in the name, like Pizza Hut, Pizza Inn. I will allow those to exist because they have another word attached. This is a hut full of pizza. But this is an inn full of pizza. Also different. They're not calling this that's what I'm steak saying. or burger. It's not just it's not just a place called pizza. This is a type of serving. This is a this if, is if she called it the tapas house, that'd be great. I'm different. okay with it. That's I'm right. okay with it. But but just calling it like entree. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can you imagine just calling a restaurant entree? That's not okay. If there's a restaurant that's just called pizza, point me in that direction. I will <laughs> yes. go. But yes. but we got to guys. This is the name of a, a food. Tapas is tapas is that's a, true. A, a, like I I would even say if you called your restaurant pizza, that's dumb. But I get, at least know what it is, and, and it's fine to call it just the type of plate is wild. That is like out of bounds weird you okay. can't do that back to you dan um popcorn dan she meets this oh i like it she meets this dude at a cooking class and the the smolder is instant the oh chemistry gosh. is instant i am concerned that this guy is a restaurateur who went to culinary school and graduated and does not know how to knead dough yeah. because she is like, no, that's not how you need dough. And they do like a little sexy need dough scene. Of course, it always works. But this guy went to culinary school and doesn't know how to need dough. Worried, worried about his restaurant, worried about all of that. Um, there is a weird transition in this movie where this elderly uh, lady, it's Nico's mom. Mm -hmm. She gives a metaphor about truffles in life. And then she says, there's another metaphor about truffles but I can't remember it. Maybe it'll come back to me. And they cut it. And the next scene, they're at the dinner table. And she goes, I remember the other metaphor about truffles. This is maybe 10 minutes later. <laughs> Why did we do this? Why not have her just tell both metaphors? It's weird that they cut and then they went back and she's like, I got it. <laughs> I thought it was maybe going to come in like at the end when you needed like some big advice. No. It's just, I don't remember it. Now I do remember it. Those are the two scenes back to back. Um, they build up to this date between these two people. that They meet at cooking class. Yep. And their chemistry is off the charts. Off the and they charts. Meet, build up this date. And they finally, she finds like, yes, you can take me to a date. And then we just get a wide pan, slow zoom out of them at the date. We never see the date. Mm. Like, we never see them actually get to, like, have the date. We just skip over that, which is crazy. And then lastly, I do find it weird that the school board of the nation's largest historically black college and university is populated with white people. I, I, that was a weird thing for me to see and for her to be grilled on her English chair with this by this white woman. I thought that was weird um, and needed to be brought up. So, yes, that's all I got. Uh, Lisa says, I believe there's more than one restaurant here in Connecticut that's called Tapas. It's possible I'm just wrong here. It's I mean, Brain and I both stand in that in that ship together. Yeah. Like, I just feel like that just would not be a thing. Yeah, but, you know, I've been wrong uh, multiple times today. I just looked so. up Tapas Restaurant, and then I've, I've got, no, I've got Abanico Tapas Bar, which is downtown, the Cosbo, which is downtown, uh, Paloma, which is in Green. What about what do do tapas in Connecticut and see what pops up? How many? Uh, it's time for what the homework is part of the show. We wonder what could have been maybe having some clear question that we still have. Brian, what are you still wondering about, pal? So their song that they sing. Yes, uh, I'm wondering if that was a a real song that they all liked and they sing it together, or was it one that they came up with? And it well, made, it is a real song because the, uh, they play it. it they play it in the background under, yeah. underneath. I it. heard that. And I was so it made but me I, think. I didn't recognize the song, so I'm not either. sure if it was. I, I imagine that they didn't create a song just for this movie, but I could be wrong. But I mean, the friends themselves, you know, like, did they, like, is that their, did they make the song for the movie because it fit with them having a song, or, you know, is it a real song? I, I don't see. know. So I was just wondering about that yeah. song and uh, That's fair. where that all came from. 
Yeah, um, mine is, and and it is very possible that this actually has an answer, and I I missed it. Well, but the I, watches, right? It's a <laughs> take a phone call. It's about uh, uh, Melina and uh, uh, Lucas. Is it the people that met at the cooking class, and they have the crazy chemistry, and they go on the date, and they end up kissing, and yeah. blah blah. Um, at the very end of the movie, they're still like together at dinner. Do they have a plan? Are they going to yeah, try to make long distance work out? He's in London. She's in America. Yeah, they clearly. She's got tapas. She's got to get back to. That's There's right. a credit coming sometime. Yeah. So like, are they? And it's possible they did say this, like that they're going to give it a shot or something. And I I missed it, but I would like to know about their future because I think of all the three couples, and I did actually really like all three of the couples. Mm. I thought all of them worked. That was the one that I was like, oh, give me more of them. I really really like them. Dan, anything uh, else? That was mine, but I'll just go ahead and say there's one place in Glastonbury, Connecticut called Tapas Glastonbury. Okay. Now, but on the sign, it just says Tapas. Uh, okay. It says. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it is the highest rated, like, based upon Google, well, the highest so. reviewed Tapas restaurant in Connecticut. And so, maybe if they're you're in Connecticut, something. go to Glastonbury, Glastonbury, Glastonbury. I don't know how to say that. It's New England. Who cares? What? Got them. Uh, <laughs> uh, Glastonbury. Glaston, I care. Glisten, Glas- Gloucester. Worc- Worcester. Worcester. Isn't Glastonbury the big music Worcester festival in, in like uh, Europe or something? Yeah, I think so. Sure. Why not? Uh, we did, everybody. Congratulations. Yeah. What a big, fun time it's been. Big we are going to be back tomorrow with Wind Calls the Hearts. The Wind Calls the Heart episodes with Jax have been so much fun. Oh We've my been gosh. getting rave reviews. People rave. are going nuts about People it. People love them. They think we're being really kind. The, the Hardys so fans fair. that have written us off, they have come back on board. That's, That's right. how season good eight is. is a season that doesn't have a lot of like sensitivity. That's around, right. So people are people are loving it. They're being eating it up. Fun. And it's so that's to coming see. tomorrow. And then we, the three of us, will be back on Friday for something that everybody's been waiting for. Yep. Get your creams ready. Get them ready. The September Falling Into Love preview mm. show. Can't wait for it. Until then, may we be the first to wish you a Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas from WLFO. Stick the the That mean, Sounds Fun podcast. It's produced by Tracy Nellis name. It's recorded live in, yeah, that Greenville, South Carolina. For more information on Deck the Hallmark, you can go to deckthehallmark.com. You're about to hear some ads that help keep the lights on here at the studio. Feel free to listen. Feel free to turn it off, whatever you want to. But either way, thanks so much for your support.